So in this lesson, we're going to talk about JavaScript variables. And if you don't know what a variable is, it's basically a way of storing a value in an, a name and updated and passed around to do different purposes. So in the previous lesson, we did some mathematical operations like two times two, for example. We can actually save the result of that into a variable and use it somewhere else in our program. So the way we define variables in JavaScript is to first of all use the var keyword. And then after that, we basically give our variable a name. So we say something like number, and then we use a single equal sign and then write the value that we want to assign into the variable. So anything on the right hand side of the equal sign actually gets saved into the variable that we've called number. And now within our code, anywhere where we access the variable name, you can see we can access that value that's stored in there. So the word var is a reserved keyword. So it's it's kind of like a word that you can't use as a variable name in JavaScript. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to create a variable named var, uh, you'll see JavaScript won't actually let us do that. So you need to make sure that your variable names themselves don't actually conflict with any of the keywords in JavaScript. And you'll learn more about those as you go through the course. Of course, we don't need to directly assign a, a number there. We can actually assign the result of a, a mathematical operation. And we can store pretty much any type of data that we want into our variable names. So here I've created another variable called string. And you can access it just by referencing the string variable name. So there are actually a few different ways that you can declare these variables in JavaScript and var is kind of like the old way of doing it. Uh, the reason I've showed you it is because, and the reason I've showed it to you is because you might come across it in some older code bases, but the standard way of doing things now is not to use var, but to use another keyword and which is called let. And as you can see, we can simply replace var with the let keyword and everything continues to work as normal. And there is a subtle difference between let and var, which will be explained in a later lesson for you. So just because we've assigned a value to these variables doesn't mean that they're kind of fixed. We can actually change the value that's stored inside them. So if I wanted to uh, assign a new number to the number variable, I could assign that the value of 10, for example. And you'll see on the right hand side that number is now equal to 10. And we can do the same thing with string as well. We can just literally assign it a new value. And with numbers, you can obviously do those uh, arithmetic operations again. So we could say uh, 10 times 2, for example, and number now has the value of 20. And if you want to increase the value that's currently stored in number by a certain amount, you can simply assign the value that's currently stored in number back into number plus the additional value that you want to store. So if we wanted to increase number by 5, for example, we could write something a bit like this. There is a shorter way of writing this, which you'll probably come across uh, as you go through your coding journey, uh, but you can simply say number is plus equal to five, and you can see that has the same effect as this previous statement that we had. So there's one final way of defining variables, and that's using the const keyword. So for example, if I created another number, this works exactly the same as let and var did before. I can access the another number variable from the console. But the key difference with const is we can't actually reassign the value that we've already assigned to the variable. So what I mean by that, if I wanted to assign 20 to the another number variable now, you'll see I get an error in the console saying that I can't assign to a constant variable. And that's because const is short for constant, which basically means we can't actually change the value once we've set it. So that might seem a bit restrictive, but it's quite useful in creating code that where you assign a variable and then you don't try and accidentally update it later on. It just helps you to write safer and better code. So the key thing to take away is if you want to hold a value that's going to be updated multiple times throughout your program, then you're going to need to use the let keyword to define a variable. But if it's something that's going to stay static and it's not going to change, then use the const keyword. So there we have some different ways of creating variables in JavaScript. Take some time now to jump onto your console and have a go at creating some different variables and reassigning those values to them and make sure you understand the difference between let and const. In the next lesson, we'll look at some of the other data types that are available in JavaScript and how you would assign those to variables in your code.